Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here. It is great to be back amongst you. Had a great Sunday. Uh, it was it was wonderful seeing everybody again. But we're going to continue this week where we left off last week, studying Jesus Jiu-Jitsu. There are five more lessons that God desires for us to know. And I don't want to interrupt that from where we were last week to this week. So going through some of the archives, these were uh, developed a couple of years ago now, but they're as salient now as they were then. And today we're studying sincerity. So I hope you enjoy. I'll meet you at the other side of this and we'll have a conversation. And hopefully it'll help the church and you move forward. We highlighted several things last week and we we're about halfway through the list. Engagement being just how we present ourselves initially. That should be in kindness, honesty, trusting, humility. We all touched on uh, last week. Today we've landed on sincerity. People have a neat sense of whether you are truly engaging or you're going through the motions. Now, this is something we need to be very careful of in ministry. For most ministers start out being very sincere, very passionate about what God has called them to do. Just the, the thrill of being equipped and used and discovering purpose is enough to fuel us in sincerity for perhaps many years. The thing that kills churches and kills relationship and stalls the the progress that we might make is the busyness of ministry. It's better to do a few things well with sincerity than a hundred things without it. And we have to guard ourselves. For pastors are given a gift of being able to connect and share their hearts and demonstrate a life transformed. But too often, there's a disconnect and their actions are perceived as insincere because as soon as they share, they're off on some other mission. So as we grow Connections Church, not only do I have to monitor my own heart and make sure that I am passionate, and how we do that is make sure that we have goals. So making sure our leader has goals, making sure that I am, am not just doing ministry to do ministry. And that that translates down into the rest of the church. We can stage tremendous events that bring the multitude But are we connecting? People will not follow for any distance at all until they know our heart and that they know our heart is sincere. Meaning our actions match our words. 
someone with great charisma can bring a house full. When we discover their lifestyle is much different than what they share, what they preach, they're labeled insincere or a hypocrite. Again, better to do a few things well with goals and accomplishing those goals than busy ourselves with a hundred things and do them poorly. Matthew 23, 23, the target is the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. They learned how to do ministry long ago. They are, are well-versed in God's word, but their hearts are no longer in it. They just go through the motions. And they've supported one another in those actions. Yep, I'm righteous, you're righteous. Boy, isn't it amazing how righteous we are. But their efforts are empty. Woe to you, this is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You no longer minister from your heart. You are simply going through the motions. If God truly is love, how can his ambassadors be empty vessels that just go through the motions? They can't. And that's why Jesus is calling them out. You have had every opportunity to represent the one true God well, but at some point in your life, you just put it on autopilot and it no longer has heart. And people perceive that very early on in their relationship with the church. There are so many plastic churches and plastic Christians. What God is calling us to is sincerity. Do the small things well. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then outside also will be clean. We get caught up in appearance. If we get too caught up in our appearance, if we get too caught up in what does the ministry look like? Does it look successful? Here's all of our programs. Here's how much we bring in in tithes. Here's what we give to missions. We're working so hard to look like a successful church. Yet we are neglecting sincerity. The next stop is corruption.
because we've learned that, or we believe we have learned that we can can create this facade of righteousness and then step away and indulge in all of the things that the world indulges in. We've learned how to do church. Those that we are calling into to ministry, those that we are calling into right relationship with God, they can sense this. It's why the world distrusts the church. People are tired of marketing, tired of being manipulated. They are seeking the truth. They are seeking relationship. They are seeking a place to belong. If we are not leading from our hearts, if our any program that we develop in the future does not have heart, and it's just window dressing so that we can feel more successful about our ministry, we have failed. That's why these next months, next years are important. We have nothing to prove. We have a God who loves us and desires to prosper us and has called us to reach the world. And he has equipped our heart to do so. Let's focus on doing the small things and the, the few things well. Trusting that he will bring increase. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Once again, we come before you on this Monday and call you to search our hearts. First and foremost, Lord, can you find them? Put them on display for us to see and review. If there's anything that's unattractive, Lord, pull us free. We desire to be sincere. Forgive us, Lord, for the busyness of ministry that has distracted us from doing just a few things well. There is so much need in this world and so many places that we can invest. Turn our attention to you, Lord, and know that you are the one who has overcome the world. What you are calling us to is to be different, to be full of love, not hollow. For your glory and honor, bless our church bless our ministry as we seek to, seek to bring honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good start. Looking forward to the rest of the week. Know that I love you and I miss you. We'll be back together tomorrow. Till then, please be good. <laughs>